When I was a little girl, I never dreamed that I would have the opportunity to be a lawyer. And certainly I never thought that I could be an astronaut or an ambassador. Those were way beyond my wildest dreams. When I was about five years old, uh, I was on a tractor seat on our family farm, and my father and a neighbor were working on that tractor. And the neighbor, a teacher, spoke to me and said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I reviewed what I thought were my options. I could be a teacher or a secretary or a nurse. And I thought that maybe I'd want to be a nurse. So I said, Mr. Fleming, I'd like to be a nurse. And my father, who was working with Mr. Fleming, said, why not a doctor? And that was really a life-changing moment. I knew then that I didn't have to do just one of those three things. I could be whatever I wanted to be. My father died when I was 13. Uh, we had horses, lived on a farm. I took people horseback riding and taught people to ride and trained horses and did that to provide the income for our family, six kids and my mother. And Came to college at Arizona State, worked as many as five jobs at a time at Arizona State University, paid for my out-of-state tuition as well as for the support of my family in Pennsylvania. Then I had the privilege of internships working at the state legislature, and I wrote the bill to create a Department of Transportation for the state of Arizona, and that led to lots of other transportation roles. I was a corporate officer of two separate Fortune 500 companies. I then became the number two at the Federal Aviation Administration. I then taught leadership at Harvard. I was uh, the CEO of the American Management Association in New York City. And then I had the extraordinary privilege of representing the United States of America as ambassador to Finland and also trained as an astronaut. I'm an explorer. I'm a discoverer. I, I love science and I, I love finding out new things, learning new things. I am motivated to, to see this great world we live on and uh, to get a better understanding of human interactions. They tell me I was the first civilian woman to land in an F-18 Hornet on an aircraft carrier, but it was because women at that time were precluded from flying fighters or bombers. They could fly tankers or transports, but they couldn't fly the equipment that was capable of shooting back. I thought that wasn't entirely chivalrous to allow women to fly defenseless aircraft, but not the aircraft that can, that have the power of defense. So I was arguing to open those roles to, to women. And there was an admiral who was the father of daughters who thought that girls could do these things, that his girls, his daughters would be able to do these things. So I was invited to train up and fly the F-18 Hornet. Women have made a lot of progress over the past 50 years while I've been watching what's been going on, but there still is a lot that we need to do. I look forward to the day when there'll be a woman president of the United States. Uh, I think that if the British can accomplish that and the Panamanians and the Nicaraguans and the Israelis and the Indians and the Sri Lankans and so many other nations around the world, it would seem that that's one of the great symbolic efforts that needs to be achieved in America. We shouldn't be limited by glass ceilings or glass walls. We should be aspiring to the very best and then working hard to achieve it. You know, I don't know if what I've done would be considered success or not, but if success is defined as being happy or having something you love and something that you enjoy doing, then I guess I am successful, but I always want to do more.